Hello everyone and welcome back. Previously we deployed our smart contract to the blockchain. In this lecture we are going to use Web3 to load our smart contract into our React front end. So join me back in your project. In the terminal folder we are going to go to the terminal in the project folder and we have to install with npm i, short for install, the Web3 library. This will allow us to use Web3.js to connect to the blockchain and to cryptocurrency wallets. So we are installing the Web3.js library. Then you can go into your code editor and in your package.json file, you'll have this new dependency listed, Web3 version 1.7.3. If you experience any discrepancies, then just downgrade to 1.7.3 if you have a different version. Next up, we can now build out our app.js file. So we are going to go into the source folder and then into the file app.js. This is the starting point for your React app. It is the main entry point to your application. So if you go into your terminal and you call npm start, this is going to run your React app and it's going to initially go to the app.js file. So you can see that all the content rendered there begins at app.js. We have a header with an image of the React logo. We have some text. We have a link to learn React. So all of this is being rendered on the page and we can build other components and put them in here. But this is like the main starting point. So in here, we are going to connect to Web3, connect to a cryptocurrency wallet, and we're going to connect to our smart contract. So inside of our function app, we can actually remove all of the current content that we have and instead we can just render a div we don't even need a class name we can just render a div and we can render a paragraph that says loading then if you go back to your browser you can now see loading at your react app page so we just replaced the content that was being displayed then before you render content, you can actually define what you want to do. So you can perform some kind of action, for example, loading Web3. So let's import Web3 at the top of the file from the Web3 library. So because we installed the Web3 package, we can import it just by its name. Then inside of our app function or app component, we can then define a const that we will call load web3. This will be an asynchronous function because some of the functionality can take a while to complete. To load web3, we're going to check if the current window has Ethereum enabled. This is typically if there is a cryptocurrency wallet extension like MetaMask in the browser. In that case, we're going to define window.web3 to a new Web3 object, passing in window.ethereum. Then we can await window.ethereum.enable to enable the cryptocurrency wallet. Otherwise, if the window doesn't have Ethereum, but it has Web3 from a different provider, we can define window.web3 to equal a new Web3 object, passing in window.web3.current provider if it's not Ethereum. So these are some checks for what is the provider. Typically, it'll just be window.ethereum if you have the cryptocurrency wallet extension MetaMask installed. Otherwise, if there is no window.ethereum or window.web3, we need to provide an alert that says install MetaMask. You can use single or double quotes. MetaMask is the cryptocurrency browser extension that allows you to connect to a wallet. Great, so that is our function to load Web3. Next up, let's define a function to load the blockchain. So I'm going to create another const called load blockchain, and it will also be asynchronous because some functionality can take a while to perform. Here I am going to first define Web3 with window.web3, 
then get the account that is being used to sign transactions by awaiting web3.eth.getaccounts. And we want to set our account to use the first account that is currently selected from get accounts. So set account, this is going to be a function that we will build with use state inside of React. So I'm going to import React and use state from the React library. Then we're going to implement use state. So I'm going to define a const with the variable account and the setter function for it, set account, and use the use state to create the state variable, which means that if this value changes, the changes will be listened for and updated in the app. Initially, we're going to create an empty string for the value of account, but then we can call set account to set the value of the account state variable. So that's going to define what account is going to be used to sign transactions. Next up, we are going to check if we can connect to a network. So I'm going to grab what network is currently connected with the network ID. We're going to await web3.eth.net and use the get ID function to see what network are we connected to. Then I'm going to get network data by grabbing our photo sharing contract. So at the top of our file, we do have to import photo sharing. We're importing the contract artifacts, not the solidity file. The contract artifacts live in the current folder, which is source slash build slash contracts. And the file is called photo sharing.json. This will allow us to use the photo sharing contract and its artifacts. So we have photo sharing.networks at the network ID. This will tell us that we want to connect to the smart contract on the current network, which in our case, we're going to use the local network. If network data is valid, that means we can use the smart contract on that network. Otherwise, it means the smart contract does not live on that network. If it does live, though, we can define photo sharing. We're going to instantiate a new web3.eth.contract, a new smart contract with photo sharing.abi and network data.address. So first we pass in the ABI, which is the data about the contract, like its variables and its fields. Then the address, which comes from the smart contract on the current network. So those are the two values we need to define a new Web3 contract. We're referring to a smart contract that already lives on the blockchain at a certain address. We're then going to set our state variable for photo sharing. So we'll call set photo sharing and pass in this local variable to the state variable. So let's define another state variable, just like we did with account, but this time for our smart contract, we're going to define photo sharing and its setter function. And initially its value will be null before it is assigned with the set photo sharing function. And later we're going to add in all of our images to be loaded as well. Once they're uploaded, we can also check if we are currently loading or not which we'll do shortly. But what if there is no network data? If network data is false, that means that there's no such photo sharing contract deployed to that network. So we have to tell the user that. We're going to use an else statement for that and call window.alert and say photo sharing contract not deployed to that network, whatever network is currently selected. So likely the user will have to change the network that they're selecting, or they'll have to make sure that they actually deployed the contract to their desired network because each smart contract lives differently on each Ethereum network. So where are these functions actually called load web three and load blockchain? Well, we want them to be called when we are starting the actual app. And if there are any changes to the variables, because they're state variables, they'll be listened for and updated. So, but we do have to call use effect. And in here, we're going to use a callback function and call load web three as well as load blockchain. So we have to call the functions in order for them to run once. All right, so there we have load web three and load blockchain. One more thing we can do is we can create a 
variable to actually check if we're loading or if we have loaded already. So let's create another state variable here called loading and it's setter set loading. And we are going to assign use state to make it a state variable. Initially, we can set a loading to true. And we can then set loading to false if we manage to load the smart contract. So we'll call set loading and set its value to false. Then inside of our actual HTML, here we can check the value of loading. Here we're using the shorthand for the if operator, checking the value of loading if it's true. If loading is true, let's create a paragraph that says loading. Otherwise, we use a colon to define what we want to render in the other case, in which case we can render a paragraph that says loaded. So either we are loading or we have completed the loading and we have loaded. Great, so now we can test out our functionality as long as we have MetaMask installed and we have logged into a throwaway MetaMask wallet. We can then launch our React app and test this out. And we're going to see loading versus loaded. We should see loaded if we're able to successfully connect to the correct network where the smart contract lives because we deployed it to the local network. So join me coming up in the next lecture. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.